What's up guys, Rednaz here and welcome to everything that we know about the Minecraft 1.17 cave update. Now a week or two ago, Minecraft hosted the Minecraft Live 2020 event. So I've went through the VOD and I've cut out all the gameplay footage. I've kind of shortened it and made it into my own video for you guys, so hope you guys enjoy. A couple things that I need to say first before this video gets started. Take all of this with a grain of salt. This all could change before the actual release of the update. So we really don't know if anything's final or confirmed as of right now. Another thing is, make sure you watch the video to the very end because of course I've situated the video to save the best for last. So, uh, so make sure you guys watch the video all the way to the end because you know YouTube watch time I gotta get I gotta get some more watch time so that my videos get put in more recommended and the last thing that I gotta say before the video starts if you guys are new here make sure you hit the subscribe button I've been looking at analytics recently and about 60% of people that watch my videos are not subscribed so please make sure you hit the subscribe button I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of 2020 and with all that being said let's hop straight into the video so the first thing up on the list is the drip leaf plant so basically the way they explained this was that it's just gonna be like a platforming block a little bit but when you jump on top of it, as you can see from the footage, it kind of deteriorates. So if you're standing on it for too long, your character will actually fall through. But once you fall through, it grows back. So the example that they used was that you could use this in maybe like a parkour map and it could regenerate itself after every run through. Up next, we have another new item called the lightning rod. Now you can probably assume what this item does. It attracts lightning during a thunderstorm. Now the example that the devs used during this presentation was that you would put it on top of a wooden house and during a thunderstorm, the lightning would hit the rod and when it hit your wood house, lightning it on fire. I think this is a pretty cool addition. I don't really have wooden houses light on fire that much during a thunderstorm, but I guess if you have bad luck, here you go. Up next, we have another cool little item called the telescope. This one is a little bit more self-explanatory. It works just like a telescope would in real life. You can look through the telescope and you can see things a little bit more zoomed in. Now, as cool of an item as this is, I don't really see a use for it if you already use Optifine because there's a tool inside Optifine that lets you zoom in already, but it's still pretty cool. To craft the last two items that you just saw, you're gonna need the two materials that they're adding into the 1.17 update, the first one being amethyst. To find this amethyst, you must first find the new randomly generated amethyst geode structures. The 1.17 wiki actually says that these are pretty rare. This stuff actually looks super cool, and I know that the amethyst crystals actually work as a light source as well, so that's pretty cool. So that gives them a use for something other than the telescope for those Optifine users out there. Moving on to the second resource that they're adding into the 1.17 update, we finally have copper in vanilla Minecraft. We've had copper in a bunch of mod packs here and there throughout the years, but we've never actually had it in vanilla until now. You can actually see in this next clip that you can turn them into building blocks. So we have copper slabs, we have copper stairs, and we have copper blocks. And the devs actually did a cool little time lapse of what happens to the copper. If it sits out for a long time, it actually starts to oxidize like it does in real life. So as you can see, it starts to turn a little bit turquoise the longer it sits out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I've been getting a lot more into building recently, as you guys may have seen from my last world tour. But this gives me super big Statue of Liberty vibe. I can't wait to see what people are going to do with the new copper blocks, and I'm also excited to play around with them myself. Up next, we have a super cool new item called the bundle. Now, when I was first watching this presentation, I really didn't understand the significance of the bundle. They first showed just putting logs in, and it would just fit 64 blocks, just like a normal stack. But as they show here in a second, you can actually put different kinds of items into the same stack. So this is going to be super, super huge for organization purposes. Never again will you need that entire chest full of all those different varieties of flowers. You could just throw them all into a couple bundles and they'll all just fit safe and sound into a couple slots. I just want to take a minute to say thank you Microsoft for not running Minecraft into the ground once you acquired it. I'm so happy to see what Microsoft is doing with the game and all the additions that they're making and I'm super excited to see where they're going to take the game throughout the next couple years. Up next we have another randomly generated structure called Skulk Growths. Now inside these Skulk Growths we have the new block called the Skulk Sensor which picks up on vibration. Vibrations are a new thing that they just added into Minecraft which are emitted from basically any type of movement. Things like players walking around, blocks being placed or broken, bows, snowballs, things like that. If you guys want the extensive details, I will throw a link down in the description for the Minecraft wiki for the update. That will go through everything in pretty good detail if you guys want to know all the extra stuff. One super cool thing about the Skulk Sensor block is that when it receives a vibration from anything, it actually emits a redstone signal. So as you just saw in the footage, you can kind of make a little bit of an infinite loop of redstone with this Skulk Sensor and a piston. Now let's go back to vibrations for a second. One cool thing about these vibrations is that wool blocks actually block them completely. Using this feature, you can sort of pick and choose which way the vibrations come out, and doing so can result in some pretty cool builds. So as we transition into this next clip, you can see that the developers made their own little bit of a wireless redstone signal, which is super cool. If you guys are into redstone at all, you can see that this is going to be a super huge update to redstone, and I'm sure all your redstone guys out there are going to love this addition. 
Up next, we've got yet another randomly generated structure, but this time, Microsoft has absolutely knocked it out of the park with archaeological sites. Now, if you guys don't know what archaeological sites are, it's kind of like when you're digging for fossils, you're looking for dinosaur bones and stuff, right? But with this new tool called the brush, you can walk up to these archaeological dig sites and you can start to brush away certain blocks. This adds a whole new adventure side to the game, I feel like. If you guys are into like the role playing side of things and you're more into like exploration and adventure and stuff like that, then this part of the update is definitely for you guys. And even though that I'm not into that kind of thing, I'm still going to be doing this stuff. But anyway, as you can see, when you're brushing away these blocks, sometimes they'll have little treasures inside. But as you just saw, if you don't finish brushing away the full block, then the treasure inside will break. Now, I'm not sure if that was just for demonstration purposes, but that was a full diamond block that he just got out of a piece of gravel. If that's actually for everyone and not just for the demonstration, like anybody could get a diamond block from that piece of gravel, that is super, super huge. That would make it so much easier to be able to find resources on the surface. It, it actually might eliminate the need to go below the surface for resources at all. Depending on how good it is, you may never have to go into a cave again. And you might not want to after what I am about to show you. This, ladies and gents, is the Warden. And let me just get this out of the way right now. You should be afraid of the Warden. The Warden is an all new mob that only spawns in the deep dark. Now I know what you're thinking and I know what you're wondering, what is the deep dark? But we're also wondering the same thing. We didn't really get much detail on the deep dark other than you, it's, it's pretty dark. And that this really big, really mean, really scary Warden guy is here. And really that's all the information that I needed to know that I'm never going in there. Or at least spending as little time as possible in there. Now let's talk a little bit about this Warden fellow. You're gonna think this sounds a little crazy, but the Warden is actually blind. The Warden picks up on vibrations just like the Skulk Sensor block does. So as long as you're relatively silent like this player was towards the beginning, you can probably stay undetected for the most part. One cool mechanic that I saw this player use was that you can actually throw snowballs to divert his attention, which I assume you could do the same with shooting an arrow since they both let off the same vibrations. But as you can see, the Warden doesn't just doesn't die. He's getting hit by this netherite sword at least four or five times, I feel like, in a full charged up hit, and he's just not dying. Oh yeah, and he two hits you in full netherite armor. Up next, as you can see, we have a brand new tree called the Azalea Tree. I won't get into much detail there because what we're looking for is actually underneath the tree. And underneath every Azalea Tree, I assume, I'm not sure, don't quote me on that, there are these new caves called Lush Caves. And this is just one of the many reasons that they call this update the Cave Update. This is just scratching the surface, so stay tuned, you guys. There's so much more to come. But anyway, back to the Lush Caves. These all new Lush Caves are home to a slew of new items and mobs, including the moss block and moss blankets that you see all over the floor the all new spore blossoms which are the pink flowers that you see on the roof and on the floor and the all new very cool glow berry vines which actually produce glow berries which are edible and you can eat them but they also double as a light source as you can see from this clip we also have a brand new mob in the lush caves called the axolotl now contrary to popular belief the axolotl is not a fish i also thought it was a fish so i don't blame you if you think it's a fish it's actually a salamander my bad i know but look at it it's swimming around it looks like a fish you can catch it in buckets just like all the other fish in Minecraft. And probably the coolest mechanic that comes with the new axolotl is that they actually attack drowned guardians, elder guardians, and other fish. So when you're going into these ocean monuments, you no longer have to go alone. You can bring a gang of axolotls with you to help out. And when the axolotl takes enough damage, it'll actually start to play dead and it gets regeneration for a few seconds. And now for the moment you've all been waiting for. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Before, before we get into literally the best part of the video, I need to remind you guys one more time to hit the subscribe button. I'm trying to hit 500 subscribers before the end of the year help your boy out it's free it's super easy just just, just hit the subscribe button Make sure you hit the notification bell so you guys never miss a new video all right all right, all right. onto the video onto the video and now the moment you've all been waiting for microsoft has completely remastered all of the cave generation in minecraft so we are getting these insane new cave generations now that doesn't mean that the old style of Minecraft cave is going to be gone. It just means that you're going to get more variety. Some are going to be big, some are going to be small, some are going to be super tall, some are going to be filled with water, all that kind of stuff. And I believe that was really the developer's goals was really to just add more variety to the caves that you're going to see. But I mean, like, come on, guys, look at these caves. You can literally fly your elytra through an entire cave. As a Minecraft player that's came all the way from 2011, I never thought I would see the day where the caves in Minecraft look like this in vanilla. 
And I can't even begin to tell you guys how excited I am for this update. This update is revolutionizing the game of Minecraft as we know it. Some of these caves even spawn with this gigantic ocean. One of the developers actually found a cool little waterfall while they were playtesting the new update. And as you can see, the guy's just riding the boat all the way down to the bottom into this enormous cavern, basically. If you guys want more detail on the caves, make sure to check out the wiki in the description. And last, but certainly not least, we have the all new dripstone cave biome. This biome is all new to the Minecraft 1.17 cave update, and it features probably one of the coolest parts of the new update. We finally have stalactites and stalagmites in Minecraft, and I think this looks pretty cool as a generation concept, but I think where this would really excel is in a building environment, and I'm super excited to see what the building community is going to do with this. I'm really excited to see all the super cool cave builds on Reddit. Fun fact, they actually do damage to mobs too. But finally, with all that said and done, that brings us to the end of the video. Let me know what you guys think of the new update and all the new features that they're adding in the comments below. Also, let me know if I missed anything in the comments down below. I'm sure I missed some stuff. So if you guys want to let me know or have a discussion about it, do that down in the comments below. And if you made it this far into the video, comment down below your number one favorite thing about the upcoming update. One last time before I go, if you guys are new here, please hit the subscribe button. I'm really trying to hit 500 subscribers before the start of 2021. If you guys could do that for me, I would really appreciate it. Make sure you take the notification bell so you guys never miss a new video. My name is Red Naz, and as always, I'll see you in the next one. See you later.